temperature on each day comes up. And I can go ahead and track through the trends of the month. Another example that uses filtering is for if you were trying to track a motor running on and off. And in this example, this is for a home furnace. So as you can see, you have several on and offs here. And to get this data into a more useful format, we'll go ahead and select a series, filter it. Now since this is a different measurement type, we have different choices here. There's percent of time high, percent low, seconds high, seconds low. And this correlates to being on and off. So we'll go ahead and see what percent this furnace is on per day. You also could choose hour, minute, or second, depending on what granularity you're interested in. So again, now we have this new percentage series. And we're going to go ahead and delete our original series so we can get a better view. So this shows us the percent of the day that this motor was on. And using the zoom tool, you have capability to, again, look more closely at certain dates and ranges. With the crosshair tool, you can get specific. So you can see how on March 16th, it would do 12.28% of the time. And you'll see if we back out to the full view, how the furnace wasn't hardly used at all in the summertime, which is what you would expect in this climate. So this filtering gives you a, a good idea of how, long, how much this furnace is being used every day. What you can also do at this point is save the view that you've created by going to Save Project. And this will be saved into a different file format that you can open it at a later point in edit, but now we've saved our filtered series, so we can bring it up again later. So our last example in filtering series will involve pulse or count. So we're actually, our specific example will involve rain, and we're going to go ahead and total rain so we can get a better idea of how much it's been raining in the area. So as you can see here, these instantaneous Logs point, don't really, I mean, we see something going on here, but we can't get a good idea of how much rain happened that day. So if you select a series, again, go to filter. Now we want, we're interested in totals. So why don't we look at total rain per hour? Go ahead and plot the series. And you can see that there was definitely some sort of rain event going on on October 25th. You can see that in one hour, we actually got three quarters of an inch of rain. So this filtering has provided you with a way to take um, inches, and now you can look at it as, well, how many inches actually occurred per day, per hour, per minute. So that's a review of the filtering capability in many different applications, and, th and there are several more that you can experiment with. What we're going to move on to is our next feature is the subset statistics tool. So I'll just select one of the files we've already looked at for this, so the living room file which has temperature and RH. So the subset statistics tool, which you see you have five tools to select from up here. So this tool, if we're interested in, say, a range over here, which is approximately in June, we'll go ahead and select this. And you'll see a time range pop up. And then we also see this information come up over here in the left. If we expand all this, we'll see the exactly start and end times that we selected. We selected about the whole month of June, a little over. And you'll see, you'll get information on the series that have data within this time selection. So we can look at temperature and see that for the month of June, we averaged about 68 degrees. We had a max of 75. You can also get the standard deviation. And again, for the relative humidity, same idea. We could see the min and the maximum, the average and the standard deviation. Now, if I've decided that, well, I got close to what I wanted, but I really want to refine my start and end time, you can click on the properties. And I can say, well, I got my start date right, but I really wanted 30 days, not 32. So you can go ahead and adjust that. Now we have the exact month of June, and these will now be adjusted for this time frame. And once you have a month, you can go ahead and drag this. Once you have the hand icon, you can drag this down. And you can adjust what time frame you're looking at in that way as well. And now you're staying at 30 days, just a different 30-day view. So that is an example of how the subset statistics tool works. And once you're done with this and you no longer need this information, you can go ahead and close it. 
and it's removed from your plot. All right, so that was sort of a preview of data analysis capabilities. Now I'd like to move into more um, getting your data into and out of Hoboware in an efficient and streamlined process. So as you can see, with any file, you can export the points to Excel, the file that you currently have open in this view. But sometimes you may have many files that you would like to export, and you don't want to have to open up every one and do this. That is where you can get to the bulk file export tool, which is an add-on that can be installed into Hoboware. So this way you can select many files to export at once. Now before you do an export, you want to go in and verify that the preferences you have set up for export are accurate. So you select the general tab, go to the export settings panel, and you'll see many options here. Now for Boxcar Pro users, if you would like your, box, your Hoboware export to look identical to how a Boxcar Pro export would look, you can go ahead and click that tab and everything is pre-selected for you. This is great for people who have programs that process data coming out of Boxcar Pro. Now those programs can use Hoboware data as well. However, if you, have, you do not require Boxcar Pro and you have a custom situation that you'd like to set up, you could go ahead and select the delimiter, comma, semicolon, or tab. You can further customize how the file is going to look. It is, custom, it is um, common to want to use separate the date and time into two columns. You can specify what information is in the column headers. And then this also is date and time formatting and number formatting. So now that your export is set up how you would like it, you just want to go down to the bulk export tool preferences and just confirm that this checkbox is unchecked. Unless you specifically would like to use the YAML header file. Most applications do not require this header file. So if you don't want to see it when you open up your spreadsheet application or such, you can go ahead and uncheck that. So now we're ready to go ahead and do an export. All our settings are in. So you choose to select your file. For this demonstration, we'll go ahead and select all the files you've seen today in the demos. If you hold down the Shift key, you can select all the subsequent files. Go ahead and hit Continue. Now it's asking you the folder you would like to export these files into. We'll go ahead and put these on the desktop and create a new folder. And click Export. And now you'll see the process of the export which is going on over the six files I selected. Once this process is complete, you'll be notified of that. So now you know that all your files that you selected have been exported. And we can go ahead and verify that by going.